The Detroit Lions have arrived. In an offseason where it seemed like the Chicago Bears would put themselves atop the NFC North, the Detroit Lions haven't backed down at all. This is a team who struck gold in the back half of last season and were only a Seattle Seahawks victory away from making it to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. First, I want to talk about their free agent signings because they haven't gotten many big time names, but they got some big time players. First guy is Cameron Sutton on a three-year, $33 million deal. Extremely heartbreaking to see him leave Pittsburgh, but Detroit fans, you got a good one. This is a versatile, sticky corner who can make plays in man and zone coverage. Personally, I like him on the outside, but he can do whatever Coach Glenn asks. Second guy we got is David Montgomery on a three-year, $18 million deal. The incredible personality of Jamal Williams will be missed in the locker room, post-game conferences, and even TikTok. But those tears may be wiped away quickly once Montgomery steps on that field. We're talking about a guy who can run it and catch it. And behind this stout offensive line, we may be looking at a guy who's truly going to assert himself in the conversation as one of the top backs in the NFL. Additionally, some key moves made were the signings of Emmanuel Mosley, Graham Glasgow, and as far as notable re-signings, they brought back Alex Anzalone, Isaiah Bugs, Will Harris, and some others. But while I didn't say they didn't get many big time names, I didn't say they didn't get any. Brad Holmes put another piece out of his bag of tricks when he made the move to acquire stud defensive back Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, putting the cherry on top of a great wave of free agency. So now when we look at it from this perspective, it's hard to think that this wasn't an A-plus trade when we traded Matthew Stafford to the Los Angeles Rams. We got back this sixth overall pick. We still got that 18th pick, and now we're in a sweet spot to do whatever we want to do. And I know a lot of people have Jared Goff still as that question mark. Well, last year he was sixth in passing yards, and he had seven interceptions. So that's a pretty exceptional season. And what Ben Johnson is going to do, he's not going to put him in harm's way. He's not going to say, go out here and be Patrick Mahomes, throw the ball 40 times. No, no, no. We're going to use DeAndre Swift. We're going to use Montgomery. We're going to lean on Taylor Decker. We're going to lean on Panay and now we can really do whatever we want to do because the defense is going to be on their heels. And I mean, shortcut and sweet. Thinking about what Ben Johnson truly wants to do, what Brad Holmes wants to do, what Coach Glenn wants to do. We want to have a pass rush. We want to have a scoring offense that can also run. So when we get these pass rushes and we get these sacks, we're going to get a lead and then we're going to keep the lead. And then we're going to keep the other offense from not being able to come back because we're rushing the passer so violently. And I mean, seriously, they're on path to do that. So let's talk about this defense for a quick second. Like I said, we still got Aiden. We still got the problem. But I think the biggest guy, the biggest variable in this is Coach Glenn. He's not afraid to mix up the scheme. It, he said it in his presser when he first came to the team. He'll run 3-4. He'll run 4-3. And I think that's interesting because looking at your personnel, Right now, you don't have that true rush in opposite Aiden Hutchison, but you got James Houston. And like I said, I've done player breakdowns on him, but I talk about that bend, that true bend around the edge. And if you really want to get him more playing time, we can see a transition to a 3-4. I don't think Aiden Hutchison has any problems being a stand-up outside linebacker. I truly don't. But he could also be the guy that rushes. I want to see some James Houston coverage, but I think that's very interesting when we talk about it. So when I pull out my pen and I look at my checklist, I see that the 30th ranked passing defense added some more than credible players in that back end. Check. I see that the 11th ranked rushing offense and 5th ranked scoring offense somehow managed to improve that. Check. And yes, I see the glaring hole. We still need bodies on the defensive line, interior, and edge, but we have the draft capital to do just that. Check. So now when we talk about finishing the offseason by acing the draft process, we have unlimited options. And now I want to get into those unlimited options. I want to talk about some guys just to name a few and get your mind running. First guy I have at number six is Jalen Carter. So I understand, you know, a lot of controversy surrounding Jalen Carter. A lot of people have questions. But I think if any team can bring him in, we're talking about Dan Campbell, we're talking about Coach Glenn can bring in Jalen Carter and bring out the best of him as a young man and also a football player, I think the Lions are the team that's equipped to do it. And the other guy that I have is Anthony Richardson. 
And we talk about all those traits, all those tools, but he has to work on accuracy. You want to get some more experience. I think this is a team, especially with that running game, that you can bring them in. And listen, Detroit fans, if we get Anthony Richardson, you got to understand, we can't rush him into this process. If Jared Goff has a bad game, don't say Anthony Richardson, Anthony Richardson. Roll with the punches. At least get a full season out of Jared Goff before moving on to Anthony Richardson. But I think you have the, t- the tools and the proper things around him to really unlock those traits and build a potential franchise quarterback. Also, with that being said, I know Brad Holmes is a guy who's not afraid to shake it up. And if you really, really, really want to get fancy, grab you one of those blue chip corners. Now we're talking about Cam Sutton. Okuda if he stays. We got Chauncey Gardner in the back end. We got Will Harris. We can really build a top secondary from one season having the worst to one season having the best, if that's the route. But let's go to 18. I'm going to talk about some guys like Brian Brzee, Kalaja Kansi, can really be a solid point of emphasis playing that three tech over to the four. So now, Again, if you really, really want to get fancy, snag you one of those top receivers to pair with a St. Brown, to pair with a Jamison Williams, to pair with a Josh Reynolds. You can really spice this thing up. And that's why I talk about unlimited options. Also, I've said about this draft, it has a lot of talent in the back end. We're talking about undrafted guys, guys who may slip to late rounds. So taking a step back and really looking at the division, the Minnesota Vikings have been underwhelming postseason after postseason. The Green Bay Packers are looking like the Red Bay Packers. And while I definitely respect what the Bears have done, the Lions have done everything to show. This upcoming season going to be a dogfight. Stay tuned.